Well, the, uh, the way in which the priority groups for vaccination uh, were decided has been the subject of debate for some time. Earlier, Dr Ian Brassington, who's an expert in medical ethics from the University of Manchester, told me that a range of factors could be used to determine the priorities. The most obvious one in a situation like this is going to do with the, um, the, the particular vulnerabilities of the people in question. So, as we've heard, people who are elderly seem to be more susceptible, much more susceptible to, to COVID than people who are younger. And so therefore the danger to them is greater and they go to the top of the queue. And then you can kind of work your way down on that base in terms of who is at most at risk. But there's also another factor which would have to do with the risk that you pose to other people if you happen to have the illness. So for example, if you are in a setting where you've got a lot of people coming and going, for example, if you're in care or something, then even if you're not particularly ill, then you might be passing it on to those. So that would be a consideration. And as we heard in the report, young people with, with a learning disability, particularly the younger ones, are 30 times more likely than their peers to die from this. So you would think that logically they should be elevated above their peers of a similar age. Absolutely. And intuitively, that seems to be a very, very powerful claim. If these people are at greater risk, then they should be bumped up the queue. The slight difficulty there, I guess, is that there's going to be any number of groups who would be able to make the case that they are vulnerable or particularly um, deserving of, of being put up, uh, moved up the queue for whatever reason it might be. That said, there will always be room to finesse it. And actually, you can't really do the finessing unless you've got this kind of intuitive, um, fairly primary colours um, basic outline. So from what you're saying, do you think there is now room several months into the vaccination programme for those lines to be blurred a little bit and we could make some changes even at this stage? It's doubtless that there will be changes being made all the time and the policies will always be under review and it might very well be that a particular group would come along and say, look, we've got a case and the, um, the authorities that are working out who sits where would decide that that case is compelling. Or, and maybe, for example, if the vaccine is being rolled out a little bit faster than scheduled, we might think that we've, there's a little bit of wiggle room, for example. So there'll be all kinds of situations in which it could be changed on the fly. But nonetheless, as we're seeing now in, in an unprecedented time, emotions do run very high, don't they, when many people have gone, in some cases, almost a year without seeing their loved one. You're absolutely right. It is unprecedented. And that means that the decisions will... Even in the best of times, there will always be people who will, who will dispute a particular decision. But given the circumstances that we're in at the moment, the chance of that happening is so much higher. Dr Ian Brassington, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.